as we've been announcing since the past weekend, uh, the situation in the Caribbean is very, very unsafe for the Africans out there and the population in general. Yeah, so today we want to have a conversation on how safe is the Caribbean for our African descendants or our brothers and sisters out there. We want to talk about the case study of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the Caribbean islands, you know, southern region of Caribbean in North America. As you can see, we have Mafo Edid Olabene, who was not even supposed to be on the show today, but because we couldn't have our brother Adrian as announced, as he was recently or just suddenly called on an emergency. And so we had to reach out for Mafo Edid, who actually just spontaneously say, yes, this is of great concern. And these are conversations that we want to hold. So I hope all of you that are watching and joining the stream, uh, you would share and invite one another to be on the conversation today. It's very critical as um, even just yesterday, we are also seeing another, another police brutality of a 20 years old um, African that was just shot dead by the police in the Brooklyn in America and the current usual rioting is going on since yesterday. And um, our condolences out there to this family, it's almost becoming like a normality. It's not even one year, yeah, that we're still bleeding because of the death of so many of them, you know, uh, amongst others whom we actually know, uh, uh, Brother Judge Floyd. I mean, the, the trial is even currently going on, yeah, and now uh, this how can I say this sudden incident has occurred again and um, we don't know actually what happened. Uh, we're still following up as the news is picking up with this rioting out there. It is, it's just so sad. I don't know when these things will ever stop. So our condolences out there and our brothers and sisters in the Americas that are protesting, we pray that you stay safe and healthy. However, the situation is take care of yourself and we're out to save lives and not to cause more debt. We all know it, we are aware of it, and we're always being conscious until something will happen to us. So it is very sad. Um, the situation also in the Caribbean, like we said, is not getting any more better, um, yes, because of the eruption of the, the volcano of um, what they call, how did they even call it? I, I was trying to pronounce this name. I think it is really good, Mount Sufria. Mount mm -hmm. out, you know, um, after being silent, like I heard in the 70s, and uh, started again gradually in 2020, December, and then finally, you know, just burst out, and it's been causing a lot of disaster out there. Um, 20, 30,000 people are on evacuation, as we heard, a lot of, you know, um, even the air is just polluted, and the whole environment. And so, the seven facts that we're hearing coming out from that side is like, you know, even those that are being rescued, the rescue, yeah? Um, you, have to be, you have to be vaccinated. <laughs> like, you need to be vaccinated to even benefit from the rescue mission. And so, this is quite disturbing in a situation of a pandemic, the COVID pandemic. You know, um, they, they're still trying to be a lot of precautions out there. And how did you know when you ought to vaccinate or even know that such a catastrophe was going to happen and happen this soon? So these are all um, images and all sudden situations that we as Africans on the continent and the diaspora are always confronted with on a daily basis. There's no, there's no reason why we should talk only about you know, the progressive Africa, the Africa that we want to be. We want to promote and also project Yes, the Africa that we want, but it starts with us showing the problems, yeah? Why we think it is very relevant for us to come together and be united and face a common destiny, taking it into our hands. Because of the challenges that are going out there, it produces a lot of negative narratives, that's for sure. But of course, we can't cover them. Now, when a young man is just shot, how are we going to stay quiet? We're bleeding. When our brothers and sisters out there in the Caribbean don't even know where to go. As we all know, 70%, 70 percent, 70 plus percent in the Caribbeans in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are Africans. Yeah. And so 
it's like life always starting over. Some people are saying, yes, um, it's not so bad like in the other provinces because, you know, um, no lives have been lost. Yes, we know that. But sometimes situations like this doesn't even warrant people to leave again. You find people that just give up their lives, you know, because the damages and the starting over and even the psych psychological trauma to start over something again, you know, like you're always beginning 20 years is plan again right and so it is even uh, in, in a state where most people would say i would have died and then it's gone forget it then i rest in peace right so it's not just only about being alive but also being alive in a miserable situation where you don't even have a future you don't even have a hope for a tomorrow and we wonder why most of our people are traumatized and they just some just prefer to give up because situations cost them even not what leaving yeah so yes no matter what the situation is every catastrophe is a disaster whether it's a loss of property or nature or whatever the situation is it's a loss whether their lives lost or their property loss or just the environment it's all a loss yeah so no loss is better than any other one yeah so i'm happy uh Mafo, that you're joining us today live in uh Vibrators to tell us a little bit of the historical that we've been facing there. I mean, this case in the in the Saint Vincent is not just something that is new, as we all know, isn't it, Ma? Good evening. It's not new at all. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody, all over the world, and good evening, Susan. The situation that we are facing in the Caribbean is over four hundred years old. It has never been a good situation for the African in the Caribbean. Never. And if we would only understand it and be truthful about the situation that we face, we would have a much, much different outcome. I mean, the Caribbean is pretty, it's a beautiful place. Blue skies, fluffy white clouds, steel band music, food and all the rest with beaches and all the rest of it. But underneath all of that, people are very unhappy because we cannot understand how, how we came here in the first place. And those who might understand it a bit don't understand why we're we still here. People don't want to be here. The reason people would want to be here is because the tourist industry tells you that you're beautiful and that your music makes you dance and it makes the women look beautiful. But other than that, really, it is not a good situation. When you have to be paying a thousand francs for two plantings, is that good? Mm. When you have to be paying 50 cents US or 50, no, no it would be about two francs, two, 10 francs, 10 francs, five francs for two oranges, is that good? Can that be good? No. So the situation in the Caribbean is not good for that. And besides, the Caribbean is a disaster zone every single year. Every single year, people in the Caribbean lose millions of dollars in property. You know, their houses, their businesses in time and their boats. This is, these are fishing and yachting people. Their boats, you know, all sorts of things everywhere you turn. It is difficult. I don't care what anybody says. I know that this program is going to stir up some people who look at what we're speaking about as a very controversial subject, but it's good. Controversy is good if it's going to bring about some sort of change that is for the better. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully that will happen. Susan, thank you for bringing this topic on. I was very happy when I saw it today. And the gentleman wrote me and said, great topic. So people are listening because we want to understand how we can get our African leaders on the continent to remember that we are down here. Just remember that we are down here. Have some sort of dialogue with us. Understand how we feel and what we want. Because the longer we stay without having the communication that is necessary, is the more people are drifting away from Africa. Even though there are people who are drawn towards it, more people are drifting away because they say they can't understand why our own people don't interact with us. I've been asking for years for Africans to come down here, Cameroonians to come, people to come and visit. They haven't come. 
True, it's expensive. True, it's difficult to get visas, etc. And it's not that they don't want to come, but it is difficult to come. And so there are all of these things that we are dealing with as Africans and as Africans in the diaspora. And, and when we speak in the diaspora today, we're looking specifically, I believe, at um, the Caribbean and South America, because we are the ones that are sort of further away. The Americans have easy access. They don't have an easy time at all, but they have easy access. So today, I really would like us to see how we can not only be talking, but have some sort of program connection that we can look to see how within the next year or two, we can have a different sort of outlook among ourselves as people in the diaspora and those of us who are in Africa on the continent. I mean, <laughs> I think I think it's it's a coincidence that your background is actually just telling you you're in Africa, isn't it? I mean, there's no there's no program in the mainstream media that we will be having a conversation live on the TV and you'll be hearing dogs in the background or you'll be hearing you know chickens or you'll be hearing goats or you'll be hearing cocks crowing apart from we Africans. You see, that's actually the reality. Uh, particularly to those watching on the continent that always think that the Caribbean, yeah, it's, 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 I don't know, that it's a different kind of people that are living there. I mean, just mm -hmm. even the setup, the environment from the conversations that we have having, we have guests on the continent where we're doing the same thing with the guests on the continent. You'll be hearing this kind of noise in the background, either cars okay. <laughs> or you're hearing cocks are crowing, or you just hear some noise or someone just screaming on the street. And that is the essence of life. That is what we call a, a, a population that is alive, that is mm -hmm. living. You can hear nature speak. You can yeah, hear our brothers sure. and sisters that our animals are complaining as well. They just finally just saying, yes, mother, we are also here. We are testifying everything that you're saying. But, you know, this kind of illusion of a world where everything is just silent, you see all the beautiful spaces. It's not true. It's not true. I mean, this is something that I've known since I was a young girl. I worked for the tourist board and the first thing a rum soaked visitor did as he came off the airline, which was making its first forum, was to try to kiss me. And when I tried to box him, the tourist people held me back. I told you, can't do that. These understand. So from that day, I knew that I didn't want to be part of that business. The, 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 the type of advertisement that we do for tourism in this place is a lie. Everything is based on lies. I just want to be very straight today. Everything is based on lies. The minute we begin to tell the truth, things will get better for us. Absolutely. I mean, it, 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 it can be, you know, the question everything and make you be in that utopia of a world that in that illusion and then when we are confronted with our daily challenges it's as if we're just the backward uncivilized primitive set of people but on the contrary what we are breaking and bringing the voices together on the pan-african daily tv is actually just to show how normal how usual how organic how natural we are it doesn't matter what kind of situation is going on <laughs> What music is that? Can I please just answer okay. this phone call? No, somebody's trying to come on me. The phone has been going all morning since we sent out the poster. Okay. <laughs> yes, everybody wants to know when are you live? <laughs> People are eager to connect. <laughs> yeah you see this topic this topic is as you said um in the in the in the in the thing it's not something that people want to face mm -hmm. it's not something that people want to speak about we might speak about it quietly or longingly to each other but it's not something we want to face but we jolly well know 
that the African leaders have neglected us far and wide. I mean, we had people in Antigua alone from over 249 language groups. That's to tell you, we, we cover a big swath of Africa in Antigua. Mm -hmm. But who remembers that we are here? Who has come to look for us? That's what that poem spoke about. Who remembers to come to look for us? People are still wondering why Africans don't come to look for us. They don't even know what's going on down here. They should be pushing to make sure that we know what's going on in Africa. Because I can tell you that in the Caribbean, we are a people who are very well educated. Even if we're not educated by tertiary education and so, and so on and so on. All of us go to school. And we are a very politically aware people and very much aware of what happened with slavery. We might know all the details, but we know that we came from somewhere and people ask, why don't those people ever come to look for us? I have had young people who have spoken to about Africa tell me, I don't want to hear anything about Africa. They don't want to hear anything about me. They don't come to look for us. So that is something that has to change. In the Caribbean, we have tragedies every year. Hurricane season comes up in June, between June and November. We don't know what's going to happen to us. And we don't know which island is going to be devastated after the next. And so every year you're waiting for that to happen. I mean, I've lived in Africa. You don't have no hurricane. You don't have no earthquake. You can get food. You don't have no drought, at least not in the areas where I've lived in West Africa. Down here in this island, you have drought. You, 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 you can't get fruit. Your vegetables, you have to be trying to save water. You wash the dishes. You take the water to go and water your vegetables. Look at the people in St. Vincent today. They're, that is a country that is full of water. But Antigua, little dry Antigua, is sending drinking water down for them because they're out of water because of the volcano. Somebody needs to so, show some concern for the people, for the African slave descendants in the Caribbean. Somebody needs to show some, some concern. A friend and I have been talking about how we can do something about getting visas or pulling people together so that we can say what we want. And I think that this program here today is going to be the catalyst that is going to push us to get this done. And hopefully that people who are listening will join with us to do something to get this done. Um, uh, Dr. Arikana spoke once on your program to say that if we want to get our visas, we have to write to the president of Kenya because he's a chairperson in the African Union to have, having to do with the uh, diaspora. We have to try every single angle that we can because it will sound funny to some people. Why do we stay here? It is not good for us. It's like the Americans. Why do they stay there? It's not good for them. But because we don't know, because the Africans themselves haven't told us that Africa can be good for us. We think that we are not wanted because that's what we've been told. Africans don't want you because you're all a mongrel. You're mixed up with all kinds of people. Well, can we help for that? We still have African blood in us. We're still Africans and, and we look on ourselves as Africans. But that thing has been drummed into our head so much that some people do believe it. It's, it's a miseducation that has kept us in a, you know, in a, in a state of just um, feelings of inferiority. I don't have it, thank God. But there are people who do, definitely do, who need to be taught and they need to hear an African come and say, you would be welcome home, please come home. You know, so Susan, it's um, we're dealing with a, a, a very bad situation. It's something that has exercised my mind for 50 years. When I understood that we live in a country where you're hearing all about what the English have done and the Africans can be seen, but we're like invisible. There was nothing that you could find written about the African slave descendants here until when I started to write in uh, 2008, 
2008-2009, after I'd been to Cameroon. People didn't want to hear because we were kept in ignorance. Today, nobody has to be kept in, to be in ignorance because the internet is there. There's a lot that we can learn and um, our, our society is ensuring that people can hear and know themselves and begin to understand who we are, have a sense of identity. Because the history is there, but it is written by the academics, for the academics, et cetera, et cetera, where we want to bring it to the grassroots so that anybody can find his or her history and understand something as, of what has happened. You know, one of the most painful things to me a few years ago was to go to a meeting and there was a, a gentleman brought there, a Rastafarian guy, who had lived all his life in the country. He was a coal, coal burner, coal kiln burner. And he spoke in a language that nobody in the room could understand. He was speaking what was supposed, would have been probably English or broken English or whatever. But he wanted to know, this is a man who was about 59. He said, where we come from? What they bring us here for? What country we come from? I want to know. I, it broke my heart because this is a man of 50 something, nearly 60 gray, that just didn't understand why he was here. I've spoken to 90 year old, 90 year old man, and they told us that they come from under the sea from Guadeloupe and come under the sea because there's some sort of story about slaves coming from Guadeloupe to Antigua through a tunnel under the sea. And that's all this 90 year old man knew about his own history. Another one told me his father told him he had to work very hard. That's all these men knew. That's a cycle we have to break. And part of breaking it has to do that there must be the connection between Africa and the Caribbean. And that's what we have, have to fight to make sure that it happens. Because I was amazed to find how ignorant many Cameroonians were of what happened to us here in the Caribbean, of what happened to their own people. Excuse me, my fabulous head tie is falling apart. <laughs> Yes, you see, so we we really <laughs> we really have to um do what we are doing today. We have to do what we are doing today. It, it has to be done, and I I really want to see across the Caribbean, across the diaspora, um, from South America, uh, Venezuela, Nicaragua, all these people, um, come together to say what we want to do as a people as a unified people. One of the things that really separates us is language. And that is not coincidental, it's on purpose. You have Spanish speaking, French speaking, English, Dutch in the Caribbean region. We don't interact because the language is a di is difficult, you see? So those are things though that I think we must no longer allow to deter us, but get around them. When you go to Cameroon, everybody has an interpreter. Interpret, that's what we're gonna have to do so that we understand what we're trying to say. Because if we don't do this now, this is 2021. If we wait another five years, somebody like me is gone. Somebody like you is aging fast, forgetful and all the rest of it. Things will be forgotten. We will still be fighting like um, and, and having people killed, like how it's going on right now, if we don't do something about it now. So really the appeal this afternoon is for the African leaders, African Union, the regions, the presidents, the people to be conscious that there are people down here who are their family and people who need help. I'm not making an appeal to Europeans to help us. I'm making an appeal to Africans to help their own people down here. Many have, have helped. For instance, when the Haitians had a bad earthquake a couple of years ago, um, President Wade made provisions for over quite a few, I think it was absolutely I've read that it was 160 people. Uh, students that he brought
and that sort of thing. I think the people in Senegal raised so much hullabaloo about it that he finally just gave them houses and university um, education. Why can't the other countries do that? I mean, some of the chiefs that I know in Cameroon that I work with, they have arranged land in different villages that people, where the chiefs will accept people who come. And uh, this is something that we need to take advantage of. Because if we sit down here and just continue to do what we've been doing, nothing will change. It's a decision that African descendants in this region have to make. Do you like it here in the Caribbean? They tell you, yes, nice music, nice food, holidays, sun, beach, and so on. Look at it with the pandemic now. We can't go to the beach. We can't, we are forbidden to go to the beach. All right? As, as some days you can't go at all. Some days you can go from maybe six to nine o'clock. That's it. You can't congregate. So what is it? What is it that we're staying here for? And why do we stay to enrich the grandchildren of our slave masters? That is the thing that I want people to think about. I made up my mind a long time ago as a young woman. I wasn't doing it. Not staying here to enrich the grandchildren of the slave masters. No way. And if we don't have a revolutionary mindset, we will stay here and just go along with the flow and nothing will change. Some people have to get a mindset that I will not stay here in this any longer. I will not stay here where hurricanes devastate our islands every year. Where volcanoes pop up just like that. Where water becomes scarce. Where food is scarce. Most of our food is imported. Why? All of the islands are not dry like Antigua. Many of them produce a lot of food that rots on the ground. But what happened? Food is brought in from America. It's, it's a trade. We have to reverse those sort of trends to make things better for ourselves or go where we can get food without problem. That's the thing about it. Go where we can get food. Go where there is land and that you can go where there is freedom of that people don't bother to go, can't bother to go. When I was a girl, you could go from here to Guadalupe, which is 15 minutes away for 18 US dollars. Our sister island is 15 minutes away. We used to be go, able to go there for 18 US dollars, not even so much. I think it was less than that at one time. Today is like 200 and something dollars to go, 15 minutes across the water. Why? They tell you it's because tourist prices and all the rest of it. No. We have seas that are full of fish and you're paying $17 for a half kilo of fish. $17 easy. So you see, it's not good down here. And I, those of us who have been fortunate enough to visit Africa, to live there, and to understand that there is a different kind of life available to you. And Africa, in some instances, are calling us home. Take the invitation and go. No money is a problem. Because a ticket between here and Africa can be anywhere between 4,500 and 7,000 EC. That's a lot of money. That's like two and a half thousand US dollars. That's a lot of money for poor people to, um, to pay who want to go home to Africa. So we have to look at best that tack coin and make sure that we have money that we can help people to go home. That's one of the things we have to use every means to ensure that we can go home and make our contribution there. Marcus Garvey, one thing that really struck me was when he said, people in the West Indies with the resources and the skills must go home to rebuild Africa. We need to go. Africa needs us too, just like we need Africa. We need each other. Not to stay down here and be as we say in the Caribbean, spinning top in mud. You know, when you spin a top, if 
it's muddy, it won't spin. <laughs> You're just trying to get something done, but nothing's happening. So it's time for us to begin to think and to act and to make some sort of move to help ourselves as African people. Mako, and we need the leaders yes. to understand. Mm -hmm. We are very grateful. We, I mean, it's it's like, I mean, just in a couple of, now we have more than how many watching only here on the YouTube. This is incredible. And for all of you that are just joining us, it's a pleasure to have you here. We are talking about the case study of St. Vincent's and the Grenadians. But of course, it's a general situation in the Caribbean mm -hmm. the island where our brothers and sisters are residing there for more than 400 years. And the African Union, particularly, and the African leaders are not paying attention. That is our anger. That is our frustration. Yeah, that is our, definitely. I don't know how to even, that is what is pinching and beating us. It is eating us. It's giving us a headache. It is giving us, I mean, I can't even talk about that. Yes, right? Which kind of leaders, which kind of countries would just leave their people? Now we see terrible images. We're going to play these images for you. Who is watching? For you to just have an idea what we're talking about. You know, look carefully in these images, even the ones in the boat, and ask yourself, do you see any white person in that image? If that would have happened to any European country or even just countries that have another color, you would see how the world is bubbling. Now, what is happening with us Africans? What is happening to our leaders? That is what we want you to help us to share this opinion and this conversation. Now we just had Mafo Obit said, the president of Kenya, His Excellency Uru Kenyatta, is the president sitting on the SID region. I mean, we'll be having a minister from the SID region on this topic because this week is gonna be about that. I mean, we're not going to be silent. My mentor, Professor Piala Lumumba says it all the time. We need to make this noise until we get the attention. But we're doing it in an orderly way, but we need to continue drumming. We need to continue doing these petitions. There is no way that an African young person or a mother or a father would stay quiet in this decade. No, no way. It is not going to happen, not today, not tomorrow, not anytime. That was the past. Today is a new decade. And it is very um, necessary for us to say enough is enough. Which mm -hmm. other race of people or human on this planet suffers like an African or a black person? Which, one, which race on earth abandons its own? Yeah, even though they were taken into slavery. I mean, talk less on the one in the continent that were colonized, but the ones even in the diaspora. Now, what kind of leadership are we talking here? It is very important for you young people to understand Gone are those days, maybe we are not meeting, we were not seeing each other, but today, no, it is the year, it is the day for the digitalization. So we want to make noise on these social media platforms until, yes, some people would gain some consciousness, be them leaders or be them just even us Africans that don't even understand what is going on. The Bible says, keeps worrying God until he answers you. Yes, I'm not a fanatic, but that's it. Keep hand-walking. I know a, a former reverend, a JC Kansen who passed away in my country, he said it very clear. You keep humbucking God. Humbucking means worry him all the time until he answers you. Yeah. And it's the same thing. We are going to drum and keep our voices. I've told you, the more challenges, the more louder we become. The more louder, the more silent they are, the more louder. Because that is our union. It is not about a revolution of anything. It's about a wake up call and us taking our own responsibilities also to play a role in the, in, the, in the development of Africa. So we don't sit and point only fingers at the leaders and say they're not doing anything. What are you doing as a citizen? Are you calling their attention? Are you constantly tweeting them and saying, look at what is going out there uh, in SVG? What are you saying about that? We want to know your opinion and we want to know, see your engagement as from this conversation. Make this video go so viral and we're gonna post it in all, on all their platforms of all these African unions and their, and their president. I already started the tweet. 
yeah, since Friday about this volcano. But it's not only the, in the tweet that I do here. I do constantly every day. It is our right as citizens of Africa not to be silent. Yeah. So like I said, I'm very sorry, but we cannot get more civilized and politically correct and keep our tempers down and no, try to be, you know, professionals. Why? No way. We're not going to be any professional in a way of trying to be civilized, right? We have to rise up and say it the way it is. No one would do it but us. So if you're joining this stream for any other platform, take a look at this video to understand the situation that we're talking about in the St. Vincent's Island as we play this video for you to get an overview about it. What is the situation out there for our people? This is devastating. This is something you need to check on on your host as well. And it feels like it's so hard. Come on, roughest. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Wait, boy. Ooh, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on.
Um, yeah, it, it, it could, it could, it couldn't be said better. Edith, are you there? My four. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think we need to refresh to get my four Edith back here on the show because we lost her. So just give us some seconds to refresh. She's not more in the studio. I think she was kicked out by the show. Let's just refresh for a second and she'll be back live. Just stay tuned, okay? Don't go nowhere. We have to fix these things together. All right. Um, I don't know what happened, but it's a refresh so she can join us anytime I want to find out from her why she's not connected. Did she run out of Barry or whatever? Uh, but I think she knows that she's on the show and she'll be joining us here. I just hope that she's safe and that no particular is issues affecting her down there. Um, I would have to give her a call. And let's just find out. Yes, in the meantime, you've seen it, right? I mean, for those of you who don't know, the SVG, this is an island, a very beautiful island with almost 110 more than approximately um, in 70 percent, more than 70 percent are Africans. Um, Mafo. Hello. All right. Yeah, you're out of the show. Are you okay? I'm fine, yes. All right, can you just What's click? Happening? I don't know. You're out of the show. Uh, just click and join. Okay, maybe the internet went off. I'll see. Okay. Yeah, just click on the link. You'll be back on the show, okay? Okay, it's here. All right. <laughs> okay, so yes, like I said, the internet just went off and then she didn't even realize that she was out of the show that's that's how technique is yes um she was talking about a very good example and i was i, I would like us to look at, uh, at this example is the case study of the haitian earthquake we know about this famous you know 2010 who doesn't know about the the famous earthquake in haiti and now this good president of senegal uh, decided to act and rescue its people out there even though he was met with a lot of critics you know from from his own from senegalese saying yeah we are still not even um on our feet and that we have to take more than 160 uh, students out to to rescue them out of this earthquake i mean what is going on we we truly understand but what did the president say? The president said, we are giving the rest of the world a lesson in humanity. You must not have to save lives, right? And then he said, I mean, you could see those placards, right? He said, welcome to the, to, to the home of your ancestors. And every entrance in Senegal in 2010, when this team of students were rescued from, from Haiti, you could see see them in these buses and the caps and the t-shirts that they were putting on and flag saying welcome to the home of your ancestors and you are neither strangers nor refugees you are members of the family and, and we keep hearing Mafo Edith saying we are family of course that is the spirit must Africa be comfortable to be able to look for its lost uh, sons and daughters out there which world is ever comfortable? Which race is going to sit now and say, oh, yeah, you know, we're really comfortable now so we can look out for others? There always would be challenges everywhere we are. But these are your own children. I keep asking, even, an, a, a, you know, an Asian, anywhere is an Asian, right? But we're looking at our brothers, black like you and me, and we call them Caribbeans. So we have to go away from all these images and all these placards in our mind. We are Africans. I just told you about the story and you all are watching the rioting going on in the Americas of this 20 year old uh, son of us that has just been shot again. I mean, how does it look like? Now we're gonna sit there and the Africans on the continent or in the diaspora, we say, no, it happens in America. It's the same thing. 
you know, we'll be comfortable just like, no, it's not bad enough. As if it's not bad enough, it has to really be, I don't know, how much more can we contain life? This is a point where we say, stop. At what point an African leaders, yeah, the African Union, African citizens, not going to say, no, are we just going to just be comfortable and say, no, no, yes, the, the, the Saint, uh, how do you call it? The, the Saint Sufire uh, uh, volcano, you know, is yours and more lives will last. How much more are we going to be comfortable? You know, and every time we take excuses, no, they were not lives. Now, when, even when they're lives, then we say, oh, you know, it's hard. Who is so passive? Just like, no, I think mean, we have to do more. We have to do more. Like we say, we have to talk about these things. Anything that is happening in your community, in your villages, please expect this from the African daily yes, team. We have to bring up yeah, this right. We have to expose it. We have to connect through our challenges. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Even if it's just a, a, a child that is walking on the street and, 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 and it's miserable. We want to know these stories. No single African is comfortable until we all have a basic standard of living in and out of Africa. If you just think that you're an African and you say, I'm done, oh, my life is certain, now I'm okay. You know, I work my money and end and pay my bills and I have my properties. You are, I'm sorry to say it, you're so wrong. You need to rethink again because the image in the Caribbean is your story. The image on the continent is your story. You never would go away from it. Look at the colors of these images. How do they look different from you? Mafo, are you there? I'm just, I'm just sitting in for you. Mafo, are you there? Yeah, so you hearing me? Oh yeah, I'm, thank, I'm thankful that you're back. Yeah. All right, all right. I was talking about this, um, this example, this good example of Senegal that you mentioned earlier. Now, isn't it time that, you know, we do these things again even more often? It should be done. It, it can be done. Let me just put it simply that way. It can be done. Um, the, the funds in, in Cameroon, in, in, in Bami, the Mami making funds in Cameroon, in West Province, are working on it. The ones in uh, in Limbe are working on it. We have had discussions since uh, 2004. I tell you one thing, Susan. Things take time. Ideas take time to ripen up and reach a point where they can be opened up for action to happen. Uh, since 2005, we've been discussing this thing. Since 2007, we've been discussing this thing. The time is now. More and more people are hearing about it. More and more people will come in and join. And that is where we will have some sort of effect because you have many voices together, you know? And what we need to plan is how we are going to come together. As I mentioned earlier, a friend and I had spoken about how we are going to approach this thing as the, as the Caribbean diaspora so that we can get our visas to go back to Africa to go to travel, to come back, for whatever reasons you want to do it. We want to have our citizenship. We want to have that African Union six region visa that is spoken about since 2006. Where is it so long? Why is it taking so long? In the meantime, uh, we're down here being battered around um, psychologically, even if not physically, some physically, but psychologically, you know? So we have to, to, to put ourselves together and take this seriously as a diaspora. The Africans have to do what they have to do and we have to do what we have to do so that we can come together and discuss what we need, what we want and what is there for us from them and for them from us because we're not coming empty handed at all. We are coming with the experience of having lived in the West under slavery conditions, under colonial conditions, and under the conditions where we are supposed to be independent, but certainly not independent, and trying to be free. We want to be free from the situation down here. 
not let the carnivals and all the rest of it um, fool us. Those are the trivialities. The reality is that we yearn for our homeland. It is just something that happens with people who have been separated, you know, without their consent from their homeland. So we need to look at we need to look at that. I know there are several friends of mine who are listening on, and after this, things are not going to be the same. I can tell you that. Yes, absolutely. And uh, another good example, apart from the one in Senegal that actually, you know, chilled down my pains. When I read that the Barbados and the and Antigua Barbados have actually offered, you know, their support for this uh, for this uh, returnee. And even say, hey, and for a rescue, we are here, we are home to you, mm -hmm. right? And it what actually was that I said, that is the African spirit that united, you know, in the Caribbean as well as on the continent should be that, isn't it? Yes, um, and Antigua is taking in 250, 250 peoples. Some other islands are taking in 300 and so on and so on. And, um, in Africa, they would willingly do it if we went and made a proper approach. I have done that with the, the groups that I work with. It's just a matter of going now to put everything down properly and for people to start coming. I, I plan to go later this year with people who want to go. Some want to go and stay. Some want to go do business. Some want to go and help. Some want to go and live you know, and contribute. So it, we just have to get moving. Um, we had our hopes pinned so much on Airpeace, which came into Jamaica in, at the end of December and was supposed to go back in at the end of March, doing a back-to-back. -back. You go to Jamaica, Jamaicans come to Nigeria or wherever in Africa. But for, for whatever reason, we don't understand, the flight has not taken place. And we are really banking on being able to cross the Atlantic straight across. We don't want to spend any more money going to Europe and then taking a flight from there down to Africa. We want to go straight across the Atlantic. When we were brought here, nobody went to Europe with us. They brought us straight across the Atlantic by boat mm -hmm. for months on that terrible sea. We can fly back. in maybe six or seven hours we walked. People nearly went crazy with joy when we, when we re realized, when people realized that between Barbados and Senegal, it's only four hours by air. Mm -hmm. Between Lagos and Antigua, it has been flown, it's five and a half hours by air. But what we have to do is go all the way up to Europe, to um, England or France or wherever for eight hours, and then take six hours down from there to wherever we want to go to in Africa. It's ridiculous. We're not so stupid that we're going to continue doing it anymore. So somehow the airline has to start flying straight across in 2021. We have to work on it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, I saw a comment even on the chat that someone was like, this is a this is the real big opportunity for African countries now to reach out, right? Most of the times yeah. we're talking about, oh, they're not visas, or oh, they're not interested. And, and look at the problem of the, the situation of the COVID and the and the pandemic and the unvaccinated. Isn't this a real opportunity? Let me just say the gods of Africa are really showing you Africans. This is the time. Now take it. You don't need any protocols or anything. It is rescue. Mm -hmm. it, it look, if it were up to um individuals, we could go without any problem. If it were up to individuals. But you see, when you're going into a country, you have to look at things like um how long you can stay, whether or not you can work if you can build the schooling for the children, all of these things, all of these things have to be looked into before we take people over. All of these have to look be looked at before you can begin to take people en masse. For instance, there's that American company, Sankofa, who is carrying people over, but they have a very good program. We have to have a program put together 
where mm -hmm. people can go in and be organized and oriented so that they're not feeling as though they're being they're strangers you know and another thing um susan is that people in the diaspora need to know more about africa and people in africa need to know more about us in the diaspora i had such a um an event happened to me that really angered me when i went to cameroon a, a friend of mine took me to visit her family so concerned about Africa for you're not an African hey who told him to say that I had to tell him do you know how hard we have had to work on ourselves and in our environment to remain African and to be able to say that we're African and I've come home here to Africa and you're telling me this when I explained to him what happened during slavery he was very contrite he apologized and said he did not know People do not know. And if it, ignorance is one of the things that is killing us as Africans, we need to educate ourselves. We, when I say ourselves, we need to, to set up systems where we can teach each other, teach those who don't know. Mafo. Really, really push it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting, but I just want to say, Mako, th this is just not even the time to say we have to take time to know each other. Let's meet on the continent and we start knowing each other. I mean, we're never going to have a situation where we say, now I have to study and understand them first before it is the right of our citizens in the world to come back home. It is their human right. It is their racial right. It is their geographical right. It is their God-given right. For God's sake, we, we would discuss that when we get on the continent. We would start figuring out how we understand or not understand, right? That Those are internal issues that we don't need to sort out. In the meantime, these programs and how you're educating us, being here is already going viral. Okay, if I look at the statistics of those that are watching from the continent, it's amazing. And all these things, even the coming back and the feedback that we have on the Pan African Daily TV, I think we are the most celebrity, <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> social media platform. Yes, because of this education and information and awareness and sensitization. And I'm really thankful to my small team. Like the video you just watched, I give a shout out to Patrick Asarim on the continent in Kenya, who is putting up all this, right? Oh, and, and we're just sitting here. We're just a team of four. But the whole team is comprised of all of you watching, commenting, sharing, learning, guests coming here. It's a whole massive project that we are into it. So it is right. I know that you've been kicked out again. It is right. It is the right time, please. I, I know ADT is having some problems out there with internet and connections, but let's keep it real. We don't need to be making these excuses. Oh, if I go on the continent, would they agree? Uh, would I have this? Maponga Joshua said, just be there. If you can leave, make a little saving, just be there. We will figure out every other thing. It is home. Yeah. Whatever regulations. No, I didn't see any African continent that shipped you back. All right. Yeah. Even, even we are on discipline, we will start facing all those internal rules and regulations, right? Even if we have to tame ourselves again to relearn. But those are internal policies. Those are internal regulations. What we just need, we are prodigal children. Come back home. We are prodigal children. Come back home. We are the last children. Come back home. When you come back home, we would start talking about what we need to figure or to fix. Even if we have to fight because we don't understand each other. Of course, we were beaten into slavery to even refuse who we are. And we should not underestimate this thing. So we know it's not anything that easy. But what we are saying every day, it, it is the responsibility of you African Union leaders that are watching us. It is a responsibility of African president. We know that you have too much on your plate and this, yes, but give us the possibility. It is the responsibility of you young people. I'm on the neck of the minister 
uh, of the of the SIP region. And I want to get him on the show tomorrow. And we must get him on the show tomorrow. Yeah, they're always complaining of they're not having time and setting other priorities, right? Who do they take us for? We are holding each and every one of us accountable. They would be here on this program and they would tell us what is actually going on. Are they not seeing these images that we're seeing? Are they just so blind that it's only us? Why do, why do we have that concern? Are we of a different race, of a different DNA? Do we look different? I mean, are we of a different uh, planet, right? No. I think it is loud enough, it is clear enough that we are calling. We're not going to just be appealing. Oh, we appeal. Oh, we are appealing on our leaders. No, we're not appealing. They're our fathers. And we do respect them with all everything. But no, it's time. That action has to be taken. Hello, Glendon. Yes, good afternoon, sis. And, uh... You're on air. Well, let me say it's a pleasure to be on the air once again with Pan African Daily TV, yourself, and my elder mother, Edith. It's a great pleasure, and I'm happy that we are having this conversation. It's just unfortunate that this is a repeated conversation. And we can't keep doing this when there's a problem. I think we as a people, should know by now after 400 plus years that we can't just function in when there's a disaster we have to make some kind of plans of, you know prepare ourselves for these type of activities and i've said it in so many ways and i, I am still hoping that it would be understood that as a people we can build a base on the continent build our economic base on the continent of Africa where we have all the resources in the world. And from there, we can build anything anywhere else on the planet. At that point, we would get all the respect we deserve. But if we keep trying to build these little, let me call them these little huts at different points, they pick us off because we still want to be talked about from these nationalistic point of view. We still want to be seen as these islanders. We are not that. We are bigger than that. We are an African people just all over the here in the wilderness until we acknowledge home as home and establish our base at home. We will continue to suffer in the wilderness. I'm, I'm hoping that this is the last time that we have to face this kind of disaster and not have any true place to get our, our, our resources from to help us fight this battle. And I'm hoping that some of these African leaders, wherever they are on the African continent, see this and remember we have African people out in the wilderness and they need a place. They need somewhere right now. Reach out to them. I don't know what resources these people may, these, these, these leaders may have at their disposal, but I know for sure Ethiopia, even though it's on the water side of the Caribbean, of, of the African continent, they have a, a military that is, you know, I would think second to none. And they may have some resources that can get across the, the continent and get to the Caribbean. If they have to give, I, I think there was a, a, a country in, in Africa that was offering land space to Africans in the diaspora to come and build. Give the Africans in the diaspora an opportunity to come, open your doors to them. Because a lot of these countries that are, are, that are in the West, they ask you to be vaccinated to come in. Croatians are turning around people who are not vaccinated. How, I want to, I mean, how can that be? So just because you don't take a vaccine, you're not going to be safe? What nonsense is this? And we even have leaders in the Caribbean suggesting that people be vaccinated just to be safe. What nonsense is that? I mean, I wish I could speak up, speak up, address some of these, these leaders. But again, for me to address them, they would ask me, well, what, what ties do I have to, to St. Vincent? Well, I'm an African, and African people in St. Vincent are suffering. This okay. Is the kind of thing. 
that we need to address. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't even want to beg. Leaders got to lead, lead, show leadership, help African people now. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity again, Susan. I, I truly appreciate you on the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you too. And I think, um, yes, uh, <laughs> we can appreciate ourselves. We can thank ourselves. It's not enough. It's not enough. I mean, none of us should be sitting here waiting um, to get some thanks for doing something. No. All of us should be so heartbroken to pick up and do something. It is the, the time of thanking or, or, or wanting recognition. Of course, I like the fact that you thank me for doing this. And I thank you all also for, for, for being on this journey with us today. But now, even for you, Christians, what is Exodus telling us? What period are we living in now? What period are we living in even when the prophets like King Maponga Joshua holds his trumpet and is blowing out from the hun, yeah, from the continent and saying, you come back home? What time are we in? I mean, do we just read even the scriptures and then don't even believe it when it comes to us? <laughs> or we just preach it and like the time of Exodus, movement of whose people, jazz people, to where? To where? If we are not going to heed to this call, nature is going to make it possible that we heed to it, whether we like it or not. And I thank the God of our creator, yeah, the, the, the God and the powers that be, it's going to force us Africans be it by hook it's like you don't hear we will hear whether we like it or not when these images would flock all of us right into our very homes we will wake up there is no time that as if somebody is appealing no there would be no time to appeal i mean i i'm, I'm not I'm not, I'm not a fanatic but i think i know even what revelation is saying yeah you know when that moment would come you wouldn't even look at your children again there will be no time. Even the women in the fields, they won't even have time to finish. Yeah. Whether you were doing what even the women, I mean, I like to, I used to like this, like even women that did not have children would even be happy that they couldn't even have children in this generation. Yeah. So what is when is that time? When we look at everything that is happening, we have to wait and wait and wait until we sing down. No, we are calling on our leaders and each and every one of us to gain the spirit of the movement of a united people that were once broken, but need to be complete, need to come back, need to just, I mean, forgive ourselves, our leadership, our continent and us, and just even get one thing straight. It is time for us to build the Africa that we want. On this note, I'm very excited to, 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 to share this good news with you. Remember, it's not all gone. The African youth are awoke, all right? Like I posted on my Facebook, on the Saturday, the 24th, we're going to have this young champions, two young Africans that are saying that it is now or never, yeah? Now we're going to be listening to Ghana's youngest multi-millionaire. He's not even up to 30. Hmm? Coming out and saying, you know what, this is the time. We have to save Africa, like it or not. And he's going to be accompanied by our honorable, the future president of a United Africa, Usman Toure. There's two on that 30 are saying it is now or never. We're putting it, we're setting it on it, right? And we mean business. So I can't wait to host these two, I call them sons, right? Here on the Pan-African Daily TV. So save the date, Saturday the 24th. Not this Saturday coming, it means Saturday after this one. Yeah, and um, we are going to see how, you know, this young Ghanaian called Nana Kwame has done it, has made it, and is opening up the gates and saying, it is possible. He has a whole boulevard, like we call a whole avenue in, in the Ghana, right? It's just under 30. And he didn't come from the elite. He didn't come from that class. He came just from you and me, the underground, right? The commons. But he's made it big. And he wants to be a mentor for young people. I'm so happy that he had this conversation with my leader, my mentor, Professor Pierlo Lumumba, 
whom they all look forward and look up to and recognize. And they came home to Papa and said, Papa, how can we be of help? Show us the way. Because the young need leadership. They need voices. They need an orientation. They need the leaders to guide them, to direct them. Like we have the Professor James Small, Professor Baina, Dr. Arikana, all of them are rising up now and saying, hey, hey, here we are. We can hold your hands. But if you are that young person that has this desire, right, you must not be a multimillionaire, yeah? But of course, we all know all of us are rich. Coming from the continent, there is no poor African. If you have that desire and don't know how, then we will help you to show you how. So please save the date. Saturday the 24th is going to be a mega, mega show where Africans are coming now to say we are conscious now and we're taking up that responsibility, right? And they will tell us how they've been doing it and how we can rescue Africa in just a short time. It is our duty. It is our responsibility. I want to thank all of you for being on the show. I thought that we'll be able to spend a lot more time with Edith, but it's unfortunate that Mafo Edith cannot make it up to this time. So I'll call it a date and we see ourselves tomorrow, same time. Yes. And one more thing, like I said, I'm looking to get the minister of the SID region join us on this show tomorrow. We had another guest, but this is really crucial. It is crucial. I think it is time that we've just been doing these appeals. We're just waiting for the lockdown to, we have to be knocking at the doors of the Africa Union. I've been there twice, thrice, but this time I'm even going to go there more. And not just to go and lobby and just go and ask. This time we're going to take it. So if you're on the continent, just wake up, knock on those doors, tweet them, yeah, and tell them, no, uh-uh, it is no more time to sit and negotiate in the background. There's no politics in here anymore. We all have to work to build the Africa that we want. 2063 is not far. But it can happen even earlier. If we all just merge and have one vision, one vision, we start putting it together. And it starts with safety. Safety. No people alive would build a nation. So I want to thank all of you. Thank you so very much. And we see ourselves tomorrow. Have a nice evening. Stay safe out there. And once more, keep praying. Stay in prayers for our people on the continent that are under miserable conditions and that are suffering, some are just rotting in their jails, some are dying as we're speaking. It must not be a SVG or a volcano. Yeah, some are just dying of hunger, right? Or, or something else. So please, we keep each and every one of us in prayers. If you've never believed in spirituality and meditation, just sending out that positive energy, I challenge you today. Just remember the people in St. Vincent's Island and all the Caribbean islands that are going through this, this kind of miserable situation for 400 years. And they'll come and show us gardens and flowers and tell us we're okay. No, it's the same thing on the continent, in the war conflict zones. Where are we going to start from? But it's time that we start, isn't it? And I, and I like the spirit now because before, before we transited into 2020, well, a lot of people, oh, no, we can't make it. You know, we had a lot of this uh, negativity coming. Oh, Dr. Susan, please forget. You know, we've given up on Africa. You know what I hear these days? You know what I see these days? It's another kind of African. I mean, just look at all the marriages going on in the continent. We give ourselves, and I said it here, we give ourselves two, three years. There never would be any white wedding. Right now, Africans are proud of their consciousness. They start promoting it and they show it. We're going to do a show about that. And I tell you, it, it, it won't even take long. But it all starts as a result of this consciousness of speaking what we are doing, teaching and informing ourselves. It is not a day job, right? Nobody's sitting here to be doing something to be paid. No, but we have to do it by hook or knife no amount of money would pay any of us it is a noble cause to do it for your people it is a humble cause you know you set it on that pace you look back and you're happy you thank god of giving you to give you just that space to be able 
to be able to just pick or even just a word, right? To be able to design something, to sing something, to honor something, your heroes, your people, to just look back, taste it and see, and you will thank me. It is a noble cause I'm challenging all of you. Don't look at it as a job. Don't look at it as you're thanking me as if I'm doing something miraculous. No, I'm still on my co-host training program. I haven't given up on it. And if you're interested, join us and just learn how to give back to your own people. Yeah. And you would you would thank God for just being on this universe. No amount of money, no amount of anything would satisfy you. That is the only place where the happiness comes from. So I thank you so very much. We see ourselves tomorrow. Stay safe out there. God bless you. Good night. Bye-bye. You are watching the Pan-African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want. Unity. Consciousness. Our culture. Our spirituality. Our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home.